Why do you think the president's numbers are where they are? Again, all polls, not just one, including Fox's poll. He's in, a, <laughs> he's in the 30s. One of the enduring lessons for me of uh, election 2016 was don't believe the polls. I don't remember a poll that had us anywhere close to winning, and uh, President Trump won a historic uh, victory. If the president was sitting here, what he would say to you is, we're just going to keep delivering. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep talking. They're going to keep resisting. We're going to keep delivering. All right, uh, so the polls don't reflect any of that. That's coming from the Vice President of the United States, uh, Daily Caller, uh, News Foundation Editor-in-Chief, Chris Bedford. Chris, what do you think about that? It's just not out there. There is something to what the Vice President argues that uh, polls didn't seem to recognize uh, how popular certainly the president was in, in those battleground states. Uh, but is it the same? What do you think? I think it's true. You haven't really been able to trust polls since Truman versus Dewey. They've only gotten worse. Mitt Romney was getting ready to move to Washington, D.C. Hillary Clinton was absolutely assured victory. And Donald Trump's been someone who's been consistently underrated in the polls. Now, if I was Mike Pence, I would push the polls aside and they'd be looking at companies like Comcast and AT&T which just gave hundreds of thousands of employees $1,000 Christmas bonuses with his and Trump's name on them after the tax reform, or places like Wells Fargo or some of the regional banks that have all have recently in the last day upped their minimum wage to $15, a long-time liberal goal to get a minimum wage that high because of tax reform. And when you have people here after this first big Republican win of the year, constituents around the country saying, well, I got a $1,000 bonus. I'm getting another $1,000 because of child tax credit. I'm getting a higher minimum wage because of this legislation. The Democrats and all the talking points that come out of both Republicans and Democrats in Capitol Hill won't mean that much when the vote comes around. Um, you know, a lot depends, too, with this whole tax code thing is how Americans feel it, react to it, uh, see it for themselves. Um, and we do know from history that can come and usually does come, but it can often come a year or years after the fact. That's crucial for the midterm argument, isn't it? That's absolutely true. And on this on this network with you and with Charles Payne and other hosts, we've been wondering, well, will these companies that get this big windfall that's so obvious actually put it back into the U.S. economy? Because they don't always do that. So far, the signs are they will. That's a really good sign for Mike Pence and Donald Trump. But even after a one-year victory, we've still got months and months and months, and this news cycle changes so quickly. Remember George H.W. Bush, after Desert Storm, had record approval ratings. No, you're ratings. absolutely right. And, and it they, didn't you matter. Never, the I always argue, and I always tell my staff this because I'm so old, that uh, never has anything gone to script or what expectations were. And history has been decided by events we didn't see, not those we did. Having said all of that, is it your belief now, because some of these companies like AT&T and Wells Fargo and Comcast are committing to spend money beyond just plowing it back into their stocks, uh, a sign of things to come? And if it is, that could be a game changer right there. Absolutely, because that creates interested parties and constituents. The problem with a lot of conservative theory on this is it does tend to sometimes trickle down. It's not obvious to see these immediate benefits. Right now, we've seen 200,000 people at AT&T, hundreds of thousands at Comcast, see immediate benefits, Wells Fargo. This creates interested constituents, people whose pocketbooks been affected, and all the talking points from Nancy Pelosi or Paul Ryan won't impact them nearly as much as having that extra thousand, two thousand, three thousand in their bank account, and they're not going to they're not going to listen as much as to, as they do to the economy, as James Carville says, it's the economy is stupid. Yeah, if they're getting more money, I guess it depends how quickly they feel that. Uh, that'll decide. A lot. Chris, thank you very much, my friend. Good seeing you.